Hello everybody, this is Amy from Chateau de Rosière. Have you ever wondered how we manage everyday tasks like laundry living in gigantic medieval chateau? If the answer is yes, then this video is very definitely for you. If the answer is, I've never really thought about it, but it might be vaguely interesting, then crack on for a bit and see if it's for you. If the answer is, I can't think of anything more boring, then you probably best switch off now. Uh, but I'll do my best to make it quick, snappy and interesting. challenge is how to bring all of the laundry together because you can imagine we have um, lots and lots of rooms here and uh, if you have a laundry basket in every single room then you end up having to um, empty every single laundry basket. So we tend to have them in most used places like the bathroom and the two main bedrooms that we use for us and the kids. And then we have a central point like this, this big wicker basket, which is right in the meeting point of different corridors and rooms. There's the staircase of shame with things going up to the attic. And these are corridors with bedrooms running off them. I'm going to cheat a little bit here because it's hard to film and do at the same time. So I've actually moved all of my laundry out to the laundry room already. Uh, and I've already started some of the laundry because I have so much, it's going to take me days and days and days to do it all. So, um, you may have gathered from this so far that we uh, don't have our laundry room, the main laundry room, indoors. So I'm going to take you out and show you where it is. At the back of the chateau, we have uh, a few big barns like this. Actually, that's another house on the top. Um, there's a huge barn across the top there, big workshop there, big barn here, hayloft and barn and woodshed there in an old house. And we have even more outbuildings elsewhere. And this barn, we changed into the gigantic heating room. We're gonna do a video for you the, about this at some point because the huge wood chip installation, heating installation in here was the biggest domestic installation this company did in the whole of France and it's quite impressive. So just as a quick overview of it, that three meter high water balloon is what's heated up. This is the burning for the wood chip and this is the screw that goes through and behind is an enormous wood chip silo which I can hopefully open for you. And this has the capacity to heat all of our barns and houses and the chateau uh, when it's all renovated. And the best thing of all about that is um, it's our own wood chips that we use for it. So when we were changing this um, barn around, we decided that uh, to being used for the wood chip um, storage, we decided that we would incorporate within the front part of it um, an area to do our laundry because one of the biggest obstacles um, here is that um, the, say for example, we're doing retreats in the future, we have, um, I don't know, we'll have capacity to have 25 people staying here at the same time. You imagine how many sheets that generates afterwards. Now, I know a lot of people would get a laundry service in, but what could save us a lot of money is to be able to, because we're not doing a frequent turnover, is to be able to just um, wash those sheets 
put them all in the laundry room and in a space out of our space and then wash them gradually over time. So the plan here is to ultimately run washing lines along here because it's always warm with residual heat from the heater in the winter um, and to have proper big bins to store the things in and you'll see that I've been <laughs> sorting my washing. It doesn't look very sorted but there are piles to go in the washing machine. It's generally quite clean in here, it doesn't need another clean soon and if I keep the door shut our naughty little boy stays out. These are the lines of washing I've already done <laughs> last night and this is a beautiful little installation that we put in over the last year or so with a really nice Bristol sink here and I'm going to show you what I do there and here are some of our eggs incubating two peacock eggs and some chicken eggs at the moment and here are the spider layers as I like to call them yeah now if you ignore the mess around here I think this is one of the most picturesque places to do um, washing imaginable and I quite enjoy standing here um, doing my scrubbing of stains and things like that <laughs> with my this is our new Ikea tap which I rather like and just I will again we'll show you more about this in future but this is our water system that Mark designed bringing in water from springs um, it's all part of our um, aim to be self-sufficient soon enough um, let's see if I close that I'm not going to apologise for the mess whilst I show you this because this is real life in a chateau which is just like real life everywhere and I frankly don't have time to pretty it all up for the internet no matter how many comments I get such as how can you bear to live in such mess <laughs> the answer is I can't but I have two very small children and a massive renovation I want to show you a little trick um, which some of you might know about and some may not uh, I have a, a nightmare getting stains out of clothes, which is um, fairly universal, and especially with babies who overflow their nappies. Um, so Mark and I have been experimenting because uh, there are two things which are known to get stains out, apart from the enzyme um, powders like Vanish, which I've been trying and just don't seem to do the trick. Sunshine and lemon juice. Um, I tried hanging things just out in the sun and it worked to a certain um, degree but then I decided to try lemon juice and Mark advised me to go instead of going faffing around with lemons go straight to citric acid because it's the concentrated part of what you actually need and it works amazingly so what I do whenever I've got things with a bit of a stain in them um, especially a child who's overflowed their nappy I put just a good measure of citric acid into a bowl, um, fill it up with water, and I just soak all of the things that, this is just sand from uh, Clement's sand pit, uh, food stain, I pop them all in, um, and then I just hang them out in the sun, um, and I actually do it just outside the laundry room so I can keep re-dunking and re-putting them out although it doesn't really matter if they get if they don't um if they go dry it should still work and it works incredibly i i don't think there's a stain i've not yet been able to remove using it and the funny story here is i was told that my uh, late mother-in-law used to hang her washing out in the moonlight and claimed that that was one of the best ways of getting stains out but my theory is that she had six children, therefore nighttime was the only time she actually had to do laundry. So um, I'm not convinced that moonlight's any better than sunlight in getting your uh, uh, stains out. So the key here is to make sure that they are, uh, all of the stain is in the sun and is likely to be when the sun moves around. It doesn't really matter if they fall on the floor, they're gonna be washed again to get the citric acid out. And so, uh, yeah, I keep ending up <laughs> picking these up because it's a bit windy today.
just to summarise in case I uh, missed anything because I'm quite tired due to my little monkey not sleeping very well last night. Um, if you find you've got a stain, the best thing to do is to tackle it really quickly and with just plain harsh soap or washing up liquid and cold water. That'll get a lot of things out. But if you don't spot it early enough, you don't have time or you wash it and you still find there's a stain, uh, this is my go-to way to get the stains out. You get some a bowl of water, doesn't have to be warm, add some citric acid into it, don't really know how much, I put a couple of tablespoons in, you can play around with it and see, and then you just soak your stained items in it very quick, just cover it with the water, or you can just do the particular stain. This one, for example, is um, from Clement playing in a sand pit, in a sand pit that's got quite orange sand in it, um, I've actually already had this one out in the sun for a while and it's already faded, um, but I've added, I've done another soak. Then you leave it, somebody's laid an egg, <laughs> then you leave it out in direct sunlight for anything between um, uh, an hour or three days. It just depends on the stain and the material. I found it works best on cotton and synthetic fibres, not so great on wool. Um, and it's best on lighter um, fabrics, but it also seems to work on patterned or darker fabrics too. And it um, crucially doesn't seem to uh, fade them amazingly. Um, I'm sure it would if I left them out for a week. <laughs> when I'm done, I put them through the washing machine, but just on a quick rinse. It doesn't need a full wash as long as you haven't got any other dirt that needs washing off, like if it's all uh, blown off in the wind. Uh, like today but even then it's a very short cycle don't waste energy or water you just need to get the citric acid out and hang it on the line as normal you may have noticed we're a bit low on hanging space up here near the chateau and that's because we didn't really want to start hanging huge amounts of clothing out right next to a uh, beautiful medieval chateau and so we put the washing line in a, a beautiful picturesque place uh, which is really one of my favourite places in the grounds. So the eagle-eyed among you will have noticed that the light has substantially changed since I started fil filming. That's because first the <laughs> um, battery of the phone died, then the um, I had to go and pick up the children, then I discovered that Mark was planting palm trees and I needed to film them, and then the children needed their dinner, and then the children needed to go to bed. And the end result is I'm very glad it's summer and I have a few extra hours of light left during the day. Um, and it's so warm at the moment, it honestly really doesn't matter what time of day you hang things out. And it's also just the most beautiful location down here. And the evening with the setting sun is probably the most beautiful time to be down here. So it's just a moment of peace for me. To hang the washing out.
there we have it ladies and gentlemen my beautifully hung washing line in a beautiful place the woods are just starting to go to sleep such a lovely peaceful time of day to be down here I have managed to hang out about a third of the washing that I have already washed and I'm going to be washing more overnight. Um, you might wonder why I've got such a lot piling up. Well, it's because we had quite a lot of visitors recently, so there's bedding, uh, but also we've had a lot of thunderstorms, which means we can't hang the washing out as often as we'd like. Although there is one other place that I'm going to show you in a minute where we do hang washing when it gets too wet or too cold outside. So this is the other alternative place where we can hang washing when we need to. The chateau is built on bedrock, uh, so we can't have a proper cellar, but a quarter of the ground floor is actually still in its original medieval form here. And as you can see, it's used for storage. So we have two big chest freezers for preserving our fruit and veg. We have the area where you saw me do the rum pot last week. And uh, we have washing lines in here. The good thing about living here is that it's an extremely dry area. I mean, it's not good for the garden, but it's good for the main chateau. So we don't have a damp problem, which means that in this area, which you'd think would be the dampest part of the chateau it's actually bone dry which means that especially in the winter we can hang the washing here and it actually doesn't matter if it's not that warm uh, it's the coolest part of the chateau as long as it's dry uh, things will dry eventually and the absolute last place i'm going to show you today is where the laundry ends up when it's done mark thinks i'm so weird for doing this video this is where we store all of our sheets, which is not a mess and is rather pl pleasing. Look at the size of that wardrobe. Uh, we buy a lot of our things at auctions because it's one of the most affordable ways to kit out the chateau and bedding is a huge issue. And we're particular fans of antique linen bedding, which we think is really special. It keeps you cool in summer and warm in winter and feels absolutely wonderful. And when we go to house clearance auctions, they often sell the entire contents of a wardrobe. So we buy a lot of that, which means we're really well kitted out for linens, as you can see behind me. Uh, but it does take quite a lot of space, which is why we put in this gigantic wardrobe. I'm five foot six and a half and I come up to here. I hope you enjoyed this little tour of how to do laundry in a medieval chateau or rather how we do laundry in a medieval chateau. It's obviously not what we normally put up, but a lot of people have told me that they want to see what ordinary life is like living in a place like this. Uh, so your wish is my command. It'd be lovely if you enjoyed this, if you give us a like and please, please subscribe to the channel. It makes a massive difference as to how YouTube pushes us out to new viewers. Um, we have a Patreon channel for as little as two euros a month where we do lots more videos like this and uh, historical ones and behind the scenes things. Uh, otherwise, until next week.